All right, all right, we are live. Hey guys, it's Jeremy Krulikowski here, and I'm really excited to bring to you today's Valentine edition of our show. And I'm about to have a really hot, smoking hot day with my wife, and we're kind of stormed in. We can't drive anywhere, it's crazy, but we're gonna have an awesome night planned, and it's really gonna be a lot of fun. And before I go do that, I promised myself I would come live to you guys and I would share just a few secrets that I really believe will unlock the most incredible amount of intimacy and connection and passion and in unity, uh, unlike anything maybe you've ever experienced to where every day, as cheesy as it might sound, will feel like Valentine's Day, okay? And the reason I'm doing this, and this is really who this live is for, okay? This is not for people who feel like their marriage is absolutely perfect. There's no room for improvement. Everything is perfect. If you already feel like your marriage is like Valentine's Day every day, go on with your bad self. Go go enjoy your date and have fun. But this is really for, for people who know, you know what? My marriage has problems. And what I mean by that is you're like, I am feeling distance, I'm feeling distance. I'm feeling coldness where even if we are sleeping three feet away, we feel like we're miles apart. Or maybe you actually aren't even sleeping together. Maybe, maybe you're in separate rooms. Maybe you're in separate uh, actually place, you know, areas of town. Maybe you've split up. You just, I, this is for people who your marriage is de- just not what you thought it was going to be. You had this amazing vision and a dream of the connection and the passion feeling like best friends. But over time, you started to feel more like maybe like roommates or maybe like business partners, or maybe you feel like in every area of your marriage, you've got so much connection, so much fun, but for whatever reason, there's just this one area, this one big elephant in the room, and that's your money. And guys, money problems, money fights, money disagreements, just money in general is the number one thing that really, if you go back to what is it that people disagree with, you will look at study and study after study of people who say, this is why we got divorced. This is where we couldn't see eye to eye. Money always rises to the top. Okay. It's like the cream, except it's not good. It just always comes to the top of what is causing people to have problems in their marriages. Why did they ended up getting divorced, splitting up all that kind of stuff. And so this is for people who really, you're like, you know what? I miss that passion. I miss that feeling when we were dating or when we were engaged, where there was just that wooing and the and the and the feeling of you know just that that excitement and that bliss and that you know toe curling, you know, just the excitement of like, oh man, I cannot wait, and that giddiness, right? If you want to get that back, if you want to get it so that you can have that, oh my gosh, I'm so feeling so in love with you every day, and I'm so grateful for you, and I feel so respected, I feel so honored, I feel so connected, I feel so. Just that, again, that if again, this is a little bit PG-13 or R, I guess, depends. So if you're not married, you know, you can tune out the next part. But guys, I just believe that really God loves marriages. He lo- wants us to have intimacy. And I'm not talking about just like that bland, blah, white bread mayonnaise intimacy. I'm talking about the toe curling, sheet clenching, you know, just, oh my gosh, I am so freaking filled with passion right now in this moment type of intimacy, not just in the bedroom, but even outside of that, when you are in your day in and day out interaction with your spouse. And I believe that every person can have that. Every marriage can have that. But there are some things you need to get in place. There are some things you need to get into alignment that are going to cause you to be able to feel that passion, feel that just that energy of of unity and joy and those sparks that are flying, you know, and (laughs) as one of our clients loves to joke around with like setting the sheets on fire. If you want those kind of sparks and passion to where every day feels like Valentine's Day, like you're being like, again, you're just back in that dating phase or that engagement phase. I'm just going to talk about three secrets, right? Three secrets that are going to get you back there. And this isn't like superficial, just like, oh, like sexual things like this. It's like where there's that, but other areas of your life are missing. I'm talking about holistically, just when every area of your life, you feel one. And that's really what I'm going to start with is that the first secret, the first key to really being able to have that feeling like that Valentine's again, just that, that, that sense of like being swept away, you know, together when you see each other, or just having that same sense of like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe I'm still married to you or that, that I get to be with you. Right. The first thing is to have complete and total unity in every single area of your life. And I'm not talking about superficial unity. I'm not talking about, oh yeah, we can agree to disagree. I'm talking about where you are completely one. Where, and specifically, I want to talk about with your finances. And the reason why I'm going to go there, guys, is because I feel like out of everything, you know, when I survey the landscape of topics that can divide people or unite people, I honestly believe in marriage that money is the number one thing. When you get into a complete agreement with where your money is going, what are your long-term goals as a couple financially, where you want to be, 
because again, guys, your money represents your hopes, your dreams, your fears, your desires, all those sorts of things. When that, when those are in complete alignment, there's very little else to disagree with because your money really represents your heart almost better than anything else I can think of. I mean, when you look at your budget, or if you even have one, or if you're trying to work on one, it's okay. It's part of what we do here. But it really, guys, if you're looking at your budget, or you're looking at how you're spending, that's ultimately revealing like, what are your priorities? What are your values, right? And so when you have complete alignment where there's no rub, where there's excitement, where there's not just allowing of the other person spending, but where we know these are our, this is where we are giving. This is where we want to say, this is where we, these are who we want to help. This is what we want to do for the kids. This is what we want to do for our long-term, our investing, retirement, all of those things. When you're clear on your money, it forces you to come into complete and total alignment and pretty much every area of your life, believe it or not. Obviously there's some stuff. I mean, there might be some, you know, intimacy or some other, but even like, what are, like, how do we want to hang out as a family? What do we believe about dates and connection. I mean, all of those things usually end up costing money at some point. And so when you have clarity around that, it's amazing how you start to feel so one and connected. I mean, we hear time and time again, and it's crazy to me because at first I thought, surely that has to be more complicated than this, right? It can't just like money, like money connection around money and financial stuff can't be that sexy and that unifying. But I cannot tell you how many times within weeks we have people that are like, we've talked more now. We feel more connected now in the last couple of weeks than we have in the last couple of decades. I've literally heard that countless times where people are feeling that much more connected. They're, they're talking about it. It's sexy. We even had one of our ladies. It was so funny. She's like, yeah, you know, she was talking about her husband putting something in the budget. She's like, if there's anything that's a turn on, it's right there. Then one of our other ladies come in. She's like, I never thought the chance would be, would be doing this either. And that he would be putting this in. And it was just so funny because it was so sexy and exciting for them to feel like they had a partner, for them to feel like they had somebody who was really looking out for the best interest. Because in this such a circumstance, you know, the wife was the one doing most of the work on it. And they were feeling kind of like being hung out, left hung out to dry. And it's not that necessarily the men were being intentionally like, hey, screw you. I guess you're going to have to do all this on your own. They just didn't know how to really get the confidence to step in and become that helper and to become the person who can lead in that area. And they could come alongside of each other and really become that power couple financially. And really, guys, when you can become that financially, we just find that so many other areas become easier when it comes to feeling that sense of like we talked that daily Valentine, that connection, because money forces you to talk and not just talk. But when you get into alignment on your finances, it forces you to have really significant, meaningful, valuable conversations right? Not just surfacey kind of stuff. Like how was the weather? Like when you're looking at your finances and where they're going and what are the, the priorities there and you're doing it on a weekly basis, like we teach people, sometimes people would even do it even more than that, which is awesome. But not from a place of drudgery or, you know, or like, oh, we have to do this. It's from a place of excitement and opportunity. And like, we just like talking about money because it just means like, it just represents what we want to do. And so like my wife and I, we probably talk about money every couple of days, you know, something financial, but it's not from a place of like, Oh, did you see this bill? Oh my gosh. Did you, you know, did you hear about that? Or, Oh, did you have to, did you pay the credit card or whatever? It's not about any of that stuff. It's about excitement. And it's about here's where we're headed. And what do you think about this? And do you still want to help this person? Ooh, what if we could do this? I'm thinking we could buy this. And it's just really fun when you are totally united and connected around money. And it's guys, I'm just telling you, like, if you don't believe me, just wait and watch and talk to some of the people. I mean, we got so many interviews and people where it's like, oh my gosh, once we got clear on this, once we got connected around this, it was like, Phew. Everything just really took off, even from an intimacy and connection standpoint, feeling united and feeling, it doesn't mean you don't have to solve things to work through, right? Like we have people that come through us like, yeah, we still got some issues on like the, the mechanics of like how we work through this whole intimacy thing, because it was, you know, all that kind of stuff. And we, we talk about that, but really when it comes to like just feeling connected, feeling unified, feeling supported, feeling respected, feeling loved around the money conversation, oh my gosh, guys, it will work wonders for you, okay? So that is number one. Number two is you need to eliminate the triggers that are causing those negative emotions and experiences that are happening in your relationship, right? And so going back to number one, point number one, what is the major trigger that causes most issues in marriage? It's disagreements around money or it's the, it's the spouse doing something I'm not totally behind it. And we've even had people who are like, well, I just, I've got my budget, you know, I've got my income and they've got theirs. And we just, you know, we couldn't see eye to eye. And he thought I spent too much on groceries and she thought I spent too much on, you know, tickets, you know, for the game and all this, whatever. So we just said, Hey, you got your money. I'll get mine. It'll be fine. But that doesn't fix it. 
because every time she comes home, every time you're doing this, you're still like pissed off and you're still frustrated and you're still sub, you know, deep down, you're just kind of like, you don't feel agreement around it. And guys, it sucks. It sucks when you feel like you're constantly being judged by your spouse or you're having to tiptoe around. And even then guys, it only works for so long because there comes a point where you realize We've got to have unity around this. Like you've got the luxury in your 20s and 30s about not having to really give a crap. Like if we have totally separate spending and things like this, now while it's going to lead to a whole bunch of other problems we don't have time to address here, you could probably get away with it, right? Like you could probably still keep your head above water and still do fine things like that. But guys, when you get into your 40s and especially your 50s and for sure your 60s, you have to have unity and clarity. You do, because if one of you guys is being dumb and the other or the other one's being dumb or a combination or you're both, you're both, again, it's like one's plowing in this direction. The other one's plowing this direction in terms of like saving future goals, retirement, college, giving all this kind of stuff, you know, generational planning, legacy planning. It's like, guys, how many acres of corn are you going to get plowed if one of one ox is going to <laughs> <laughs> ain't nothing gonna happen ain't nothing significant gonna happen so that's really guys what you have you have to have to have to remove the triggers that are causing those problems and you some because some people are like well we don't fight we don't fight my spouse and i we're everything is great and we don't fight and we don't argue and we don't we don't hit and yell whatever and it's like yeah but you're still it's you're just sweeping it under the rug and it shows financially almost every single time actually i can say every single time I've seen anybody where that's been the situation. You really look into the finances and it's a hot mess because you have no clue really what the other's doing or where you ultimately need to go. And you just keep avoiding it and avoiding it until stuff hits the fan until at some point there's a huge medical need or there's a layoff or there's an emergency. Or there's a, there's a pandemic, there's a whatever. And then all of a sudden you have to have this conversation being forced, but sometimes you're in your 50s, 60s and it's like, it's not too late, but it, it can be pretty darn difficult to turn, turn the ship around if you don't immediately deal with it and you don't fix, figure out why can we not communicate in a healthy way? Why can we not really like not only have this be something that we tolerate to talk about, you know, and, and are willing to talk about, but we're excited to talk about it. We're looking forward to it. Like it's something it's like every week I cannot wait to talk about our finances. That's how guys it can be that way. I'm sorry if people made it sound miserable or if people modeled it where it's just like somebody, you know, leaning over, you know, your bills and it's like, oh, and sweating and, you know, sweating it out and frustrated and pounding the desk and all this stuff. It doesn't have to be that hard. It really doesn't. When you know when you have a good system and a strategy for managing your money the right way, it should be fun. It should be simple. It shouldn't take a ton of time. And it should really help you guys come together around what it is that you want, what is working, celebrating, having fun, enjoying it. Like if you talk to our couples that we're working with, when when they're doing what we're telling them to do, you would be amazed. It's like, it is exciting. We look forward to this. It's one of the highlights of their week. I can't tell you how many times I hear that. It's like, this is our highlight. This is our favorite time. Obviously date night is second to that, which you know is also critical guys, if you're not doing that. But be doing that every single week, having what we call, again, if you're married um, and we're working with you, we call it dream team meetings, okay? It's like where you guys are together, you are sitting down, getting clear on what are your goals? What are your priorities? How is it going? And it doesn't have to take a lot of time, but it is so fun when you know how to do it the right way. It will eliminate the arguments, the frustration, the overwhelm, because those triggers, like even for instance, guys, like I used to feel disrespected all the time because my wife would ask me for stuff. Hey, can we get this? Hey, can we do this? And guys, the reason why I felt that way is because we didn't really have a plan for it. And even then we were struggling so much financially at times that I felt like I, I just didn't feel like I ever had any money like freed up. It's like even when we were doing better than we'd ever done, it was like, I still felt stressed. I've still felt like it wasn't enough. And so I went, but once we removed the triggers and we got financially free and we got the debt out of our lives and we got on a plan and we got our emergency fund and we were making more money and all of this sort of stuff. Like even now, like she buys stuff and she's like, Hey, I just bought this. And I'm like, cool, but we're still talking about it. She knows she can buy it anyway. But when we sit down and we look at the numbers of how are we doing, we just make sure that we're still, you know, staying on track, but we don't have to, you know, report to each other on every single little thing. Okay. But it's a matter of like, we do have unity and we do have a plan and we do have, we have rails and in in a runway of where we want to go and how we want to get there. So that's the second thing guys is you got to remove the triggers. Like if it is causing fights, if it is causing, you know, you find yourself like th this is where we find ourselves getting the most frustrated or feeling the most, you know, just having the most rub and it's causing, you know, fights and the kids are hearing it, or even if they're not hearing it, it's like, they know mom and dad aren't happy. If you find that keeps happening and happening, guys, remove the trigger, get your finances in order. 
get it in order, get it done. I don't know what kind of accent that was, but you know, I could work at a lot of different ones. I talked to people from Jersey and I talked to people from the South and I talked to people from California. I don't know what that one would be, but again, guys, get it in order, get it in order. Okay. If you get your finances in order and you guys are a powerful team, I promise you around money, that trigger, the biggest trigger that causes the most amount of drama in marriages, I promise you guys just watch as it just goes away. Okay. Get the trigger out of your life. Okay. Get help. Number three, number three and final for the, for the three secrets before I go off to my date with my lovely wife. Okay. Third secret is guys, you have to know how to manage your emotional state. Okay. And what I mean by that is that when you find yourself getting triggered, because you're still going to get triggered, you're still going to get frustrated. You're still going to get anxious at times. You're still going to feel disrespected. You're going to feel alone or you're going to feel sad. Those things happen, but you have to have a strategy for knowing how to quickly move from that negative emotion to getting to a place of joy and love and peace and compassion and forgiveness. And also being able to now, not just that, but get to the truth so that when you have these conversations around money, you don't find yourself at being emotionally charged with anxiety or overwhelm or any of these sorts, you know, anger to sadness, any of these sorts of things. And if you guys are trying to have money conversations, but you don't have a strategy with knowing how to get those negative emotions out of the conversation, you're going to find that every single time it takes you hours to work through money conversations. You find yourselves getting offended. You find yourself offending the other person, saying stupid crap that you don't really believe or you don't really know, like any of that kind of stuff. But you find yourself doing it because, again, you're just in a pattern and a repetition of not knowing how to break the cycle. Of when of when this happens, I get triggered. I get, I feel emo. I get angry. I get up. I get upset. Those sorts of things. You have to know. Okay, when I first of all how to remove the triggers again. How to have the conversations and do the management and things like that in the right way, so you don't get triggered. But when you do get triggered, how do we work through it? How can we make it so that instead of having a two hour argument <laughs> or some like, you know, sleeping, you know, losing sleep during the night because you still know that they're pissed off at you or they're frustrated or you're frustrated. How can we get it so you guys can deal with that lickety split and that you guys can deal with it? And that's why we also are, are so it is absolutely critical for us to teach those kind of strategies to our clients because when they know how to work through them, guys, it takes conflicts that might've gone, you know, two, three, four hours long, which my wife and I used to have, and we wouldn't have a screaming shouting match. It would just be that like, we would keep trying to talk it out and work through it and things like that. And we were just totally missing the boat. <laughs> like we, we missed it every single time. And I ended up saying things that would hurt her. She would say things that I would feel hurt by. We would eventually work through it, but it caused, it left so much roadkill in the, in the, in the way. And then it's like all this, and then you say things that you can't take back. And then years later, it's like, it can be used against you in a court of, <laughs> in a court of, uh, you know, conversation. And, and honestly it's justified and you, and you traumatize one another, or you start to, you know, you start to make them believe certain things about themselves or, you know, or at least um, provoke them to believe certain things about themselves, or you believe certain things about yourself. And it can cause so many years of damage that are totally unnecessary when you know how to make those conversations really healthy and not emotionally charged with all the negative emotions of feeling disrespected and frustrated and angry and anxious and all those sorts of things. And that's just what, and you can get those out of your life and you can have them be really fun and exciting when you know how to be able to communicate the right way and how to deal with your emotions, not get triggered and have complete unity in all aspects of your marriage, mainly specifically we're talking about your finances. So if you are watching this and you are ready to get going on a Valentine's Day or you're not going on a Valentine's Day and you wish you were um, and you're married, but for whatever reason, even if you are, it still feels dry. You feel disconnected. You feel, um, you feel like it's just not what it could be or should be or what it used to be. You know that ultimately God wants you to have a healthier, happier marriage where you set a better example for your kids. You feel more connected and where you guys are winning financially as a powerhouse team and a couple. If that's what you want, go to jeremykrulikowski.com forward slash apply and let's connect. Let's talk because my wife and I built this. We've been able to help countless couples build this and it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to like really be best friends who are making lots of money, doing what they love as a powerful team. And Unfortunately, I meet a lot of people and it doesn't seem to be the norm in this country. That's not what people are able to experience um, because they don't have the right help. And so we're here to help. So if you need some help, give us a uh, go ahead, book the, book the call and uh, we'll speak with you and see, hey, how can we help? How can we help you have that kind of passion where you feel like the Valentine's again every day, where you feel that sense of feeling ravished and feeling connected and feeling not like roommates or not like business partners, but like best friends again and best friends that are winning financially, that are achieving your goals, that know what you want, when you want, and you also know how to get it. 
so that you guys are actually powerfully moving toward it versus just feeling stuck and in the ditch and not really going anywhere fast. And so jeremykulikowski.com forward slash apply. And we will talk to you guys very soon. And um, if you want to share this with your spouse, go ahead and share this with, with, share this with your spouse. Okay. We want to have you guys having an amazing quality marriage. If you're married watching this and we want to be able to serve you and help you guys overcome what I believe is the number one thing that is going to transform your marriage. It is just getting your finances totally aligned, totally united around it and learning how to make this something that's a fun, exciting, riveting, um, just again, toe curling part of your relationship, which it absolutely can and should be. And it is for us and our clients. And we'd love to help you guys have that too. So talk to you guys soon. See you guys in the next show and have an awesome Valentine's celebrating hopefully with your spouse. And if you want it to be a better Valentine's this time next year, honestly, the best Valentine's you ever had, like so many of our clients will tell you, go ahead, book that call and let's see how we can help. So God bless you guys. Have an awesome day and we'll see you on the next show. Bye.